at least three and a half thousand years people have been smelting down iron sand, melting meteorites, melting volcanic iron and hammering it into different shapes. I think it's actually what brought people out of the caves really is um, the tool making potential. get stuck in there and hack away at these things and it's surprising how quick you can chop out a, a car roof with that sword, plough through it pretty quick. So yeah, it's quite satisfying. I think, you know, most boys like playing with sharp toys. It's one of the toughest ones I've hacked at for a long time. Not very often to see a Mark 1 about. I'm glad someone threw it away rather than restore it. <laughs> this will be good. This will be a good bit. Should be able to bash this into quite detailed shapes without it ripping or tearing. Here we go. Good piece of British steel. It may go on for another couple of hundred years or so, depending what I make it into. If I'm in good form, it might be something someone will keep for a long time. Yeah, this is the epitome of recycling, I'd say. The car up just down the road. I don't know how many cars that end up in there, thousands of them every year. A lot of them get crushed up and sent to the steel mills overseas, I suppose, is where they go. But a very small percentage of them end up coming into this workshop, getting severely heated and beaten and bashed about until they turn into something that uh, hopefully one day somebody will want to buy. I'm just burning all the paint and rubbish off it so that I can mark it out and cut it into the shape that I want. Oh, I think it was a Hillman, Hillman Hunter, hang on. Yeah, Hillman, definitely a Hillman. Yeah, Hillman's are okay. Yeah, it's got a thickness to it. No. Anything about pre-1985 is usually okay, but the more modern stuff than that is very thin and very high tensile, so not that great for hammering. This kind of blacksmithing, to keep it going as a, as a manual craft, you really have to turn to the art world and applied art. I think the same as a lot of other crafts, when they get surpassed in the usefulness, then that gets used for art instead. And I, to my knowledge, I'm about the only one actually making his whole living out of being an artist blacksmith in New Zealand. It's very satisfying. It's, you can relieve frustrations quite well just by bashing away at things and the creative side of it. Just being able to, to have a vision and, and interpret it yourself into something tangible is very satisfying. To be able to do this as an art form, you still have to be able um, to do the parts of blacksmithing that made it so important to industry. Really, you have to be able to make most of your own tools because you can't go and buy blacksmith's tools in the shop, generally speaking. I'd have maybe a thousand tools in this workshop scattered about the place and, and probably 900 of them are made in the forge right here. So 
from that aspect of it, it is still very much a trade. But when it comes to the making a living and selling product, then the product I sell is mainly art or applied art. I think it, you have to achieve a, it has to be alive when you've finished it. You have to, uh, like a, a painter doing a painting, he, he wants to achieve some sort of life in it. If it's a, a landscape, he wants you to be able to feel the sun in the sky. Well, it's the same with the iron. If you're, if you're creating a sculpture of a, of a person or an animal, then you want to be able to see by the flow of the thing what it's actually doing. Well, I've put maybe 40,000 hours into the hammer and anvil now, and you develop a feeling for what happens. But at the same time, you still end up with a massive, great big pile of bits and pieces that haven't quite done exactly what you want them to do. A lot of my work is sold through galleries in places like Auckland, Queenstown, Wellington. Um, some of it goes overseas. I've got work on its way over to a gallery in Germany at the moment. i have um, just making pieces right now for a, another shop in London. I'd make a real effort not to use the modern technology if I can get away with it. Ninety percent of the work I do is pure blacksmithing. Very, very rarely in any other time in history has the average serf or peasant like me been able to jolly sit around in the weekends and have entertainment galore just at your fingertips. If everything does clap out at the year 2000, certainly what I do here will be a sought-after um, profession. It's the most satisfying part, knowing that if it came to the crunch, I could do away with every tool that wasn't invented a thousand years ago and still be able to do what I do. It's possibly hard compared to other vocations that a person could choose, but I think as far as, as life in general over the whole history of the world, I think, yep, we live like kings. We've got it made. Just got to try not to blow it.